my go-tos are to take advantage of the dimensions that it, that it has for reporting. That's one of the main reasons that we picked it as our, um, as our tool of choice for, for clients that need more robust reporting. The number of different ways you can slice and dice your information um, improves the output for, for the users of that information. So don't think just in terms of traditional financial statements, but think in, in terms of management dashboards. Welcome to the AI in Accounting podcast. Now, here's your host, Joshua Feinberg of Vic.ai. So I'm Joshua Feinberg from the AI in Accounting podcast, and I'm here with Wade Youssef from Baker Tilly. He runs the Baker Tilly Advantage Group, and I'm very thrilled to have you with me today, Wade. Welcome. Joshua, thanks for having me. It's a thrill to be here. It's my pleasure. Uh, so where I usually like to start out when we're having these conversations is to understand how you got to where you are in your career. Um, did you always want to be an accountant? How, what, what did you do in college? What were the steps that led you to where you are? And then in your current role at Baker Tilly, how you fit in with the rest of your team, how your team fits in with the, the firm as a whole. Can you I'll just take us kind of through the... Yeah. Thank you through that version. Journey. So, yeah, yeah. so um, maybe it's a little bit sad to say that I did know I wanted to be an accountant when I was in probably sixth or seventh grade, <laughs> going way back. Um, it probably is totally different than I imagined it at that time. Um, my career has been, but it, it has been a you know sort of that lifelong dream uh, that I've been on that path. Um, I I. Um, Started a small firm out of college in Madison, Wisconsin, and you know it's 30 to 40 people, and this is about 27 some years ago now, and so it was a time when most staff did both audit and tax work um, for the same clients, and and so it was it was unique compared to where we are in today's world, I think, because um, we quite literally would uh, go out to a client's site and learn their their processes and systems and and do an audit and prepare their financial statement and then go back to the office and prepare their tax return. And so uh, it was a great education um, to, to uh, work with the business owners and understand their perspective on both gap rules and tax rules and, and work with various partners that uh, either specialized in tax or audit. And you really got to see the full picture. And, and so I did that for, for seven or eight years. At the same time, I also had a few what we would call write-up clients in early in my career. So I would close their monthly books. Um, of course, nothing was in the computer then. Um, it was a general ledger paper and, and manual, uh, manual record keeping. Um, great way to learn there too. And so that was the first, uh, first part of my career. But as the firm grew and we did merge in with another firm, um, uh, like I said, at about eight years into my career, the environment changed, the rules became more complex, and we went to a more traditional audit and tax uh, career path for everyone in the firm. And I went down the audit path then and eventually became an audit partner. And, uh, you know, so it's very technical, involved in preparing financial statements, doing research, writing memos, and that sort of thing. Um, and that all led up to about three years ago where our firm um, – decided it was time for us and, 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 a, and a good time in the industry to, to revamp our bookkeeping practice into a true client accounting and advisory services practice. And um, I was asked to participate in, in leading that. And so I've, I've been doing that for three years. I kind of hung up my audit, my audit hat for the most part and, and moved into this world, which kind of brought my, my career sort of full circle back to a smaller client uh, size and, and seeing the whole picture. Um, although the tools were all new. And so now I'm, you know, have been immersed in learning the, uh, you know, the ways to automate record keeping and reporting. Um, and also, um, you know, st still getting to the end of the month with the financial reporting and, and the dashboarding that we help with clients. And so our firm has been, uh, has been focused on that for three years and it's a complement to all of the other services, uh, audit and tax services and consulting that, that we do at the firm. And the entire firm has bought in. It, it's been fantastic. Every partner from around the firm, I swear, has, has brought us a lead of one sort or the other. And so we're growing without doing really much any external marketing, um, just proving how, how fast this service is, is taking off in the industry. Um, 
but that's that's how I got there. It's uh, it's been a it's been a ride. I've seen a little bit of everything, and continue to learn. That's awesome. And it's, it's, it sounds like in a lot of ways the uh, the career path that you ended up taking um, was I'm sure a lot of it was accidental, but it seemed like it was so perfectly lined up to what you'd end up doing at this stage in your career with having the broad based experience and working with. Uh, a lot of startups and, and smaller companies that, that outsource. Right. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I joke sometimes. I'm not sure if uh, I've done so many things cause I'm, I'm good at many things or that I'm not good at anything. And I keep jumping to the, <laughs> the next one. I, I do say that in, in, in jest, I think it's just been, a, 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 I've just been fortunate to see a lot of different things and be asked to, to look into new things for our firm. So yeah, it's, it's like I said, full circle and I've enjoyed every, every aspect of it. That's awesome. So what I wanted to talk with you more about today was Sage Intact. We're putting together these educational podcast series. And the, the first place I wanted to start was to understand when you have someone either at Baker Tilly or a client you're working with and they're brand new to Sage Intact, what's your, your favorite tip that you would tell them to keep in mind as, as they're learning the platform? Um, yeah, when you, when you first start, I, I believe it's about minimizing your keystrokes. So you're probably moving from a, a world where, not where I moved from, which was from paper, but you know, from some other uh, accounting program where you're entering virtually every number that ends up in your general ledger in one shape or you know, one form or another. So looking for ways to minimize your keystrokes is another way of saying being more efficient. And so start out by understanding the, the shortcut keys and beginning to use them. So much like um, any software, uh, you know, Intact, Sage Intact has um, its shortcuts to move around the date fields and from move to move from, from cell to cell when you need to do that. And so I, I would encourage people to learn that and also learn how to navigate the various um, window panes that you'll use. I mean, Sage Impact, Intact is very robust. There are a lot of layers to using it. And that might seem overwhelming a little bit at first, but there are ways to favorite the screens that you use the most. You can star them and they'll show up on your home menu and then you can click into them from there, um, which will, uh, you know, just get you there faster to the things that you use more often. Um, you know, going further into just minimizing the amount of time you spend entering things, don't overlook things like recurring journal entries. You know, there's no reason to, um, to record a monthly depreciation entries that that's the same every month. Um, have that set up so that it's, it's going to automatically record for you. Um, the same sort of thing, kind of a cousin to that would be a memorized transaction where the accounts are all the same. Each, each time you make an entry or have to enter some data um, <clears throat> and you can either import the numbers into that journal entry template or hand key just the, the numbers in and not have to recreate the entire journal entry because that part of it is already memorized for you. So constantly looking for ways to say, anytime I'm touching the keyboard, what, what's a way that I could eliminate doing that in the future and, and then looking into that. So, um, you know, I think my final bit of advice for beginners is um, take advantage of the training and the community that exists with Sage Intact. They've got a fantastic community um, webpage um, that, that's available and, and, you know, a way to reach out there. Um, as well as just look at resources that already exist, um, a monthly phone call to participate in and learn from, and then just a lot of online short tidbits of, of, of uh, video um, training that you can do, as well as, um, you know, full-scale certifications to gain. So um, it can, again, seem overwhelming at first, but as a beginner, just devote yourself 15 to 30 minutes a week. And if you're able to do that most weeks, you're going to gain a lot of knowledge in a quick in a quick hurry, and once you once you start, there's that snowball effect of you'll learn things. Your in, intuition will take over and say, "I bet I I bet I can do that here too," or "I bet there's another another um, hack that makes you know makes this easier um, than what I'm making it right now." So um, take that time, and it'll it'll pay off. So a com combination of like of keyboard shortcuts, of understanding what you could pin to the, um, the home menus, understanding the window panes, 
yep. recur recurring journal entries, uh, memorized transactions, and just in general, an overall commitment to getting involved in community and training and right. uh, con continuous improvement. Right. Assume it can be done faster and, and then figure out how, you know, using the software. That's a, a great approach. Now, what do you tell someone at, at the other extreme? You're at a conference and they find out that um, you're an expert on intact and and you're kind of one-upping each other and figuring out like, hey, did you know you could also do this? Or you're talking yeah. to a, a, a product manager from, from, from Intact at, at the, the Partner Summit. What, right. what, what's, what's your favorite power user tip? Well, you know, um, that kind of conversation could go on forever because I mean, I don't work for Intact, but I will be a, a strong proponent of how much it is able to do. So you could go back and forth between two users and not duplicate each other for for a long time and the number of advanced things it can do. But my go-tos are to take advantage of the dimensions that it, that it has for reporting. That's one of the main reasons that we picked it as our, um, as our tool of choice for, for clients that need more robust reporting. The number of different ways you can slice and dice your information um, improves the output for, for the users of that information. So don't think just in terms of traditional financial statements, but think in, in terms of management dashboards. For those to be the most powerful, um, make sure that you're, you're um, using all the dimensions that you can possibly think of. So locations and departments and SKU numbers, as well as non-statistical information like customer counts or um, or we even, for one client, we import weather data um, on a daily basis and they relate their sales to weather data and then they can use that information to predict what their demand is gonna be based on the weather forecast and, and it helps them with you know, their supplies and, and scheduling and things like that. So think beyond traditional accounting and take advantage of the, of the uh, multiple dimensions that, that Intact has to offer. Um, you know, probably a couple of close seconds more from my, from my, uh, the accountant in me, um, you know, and making things more efficient. Um, Multi-entity reporting is, and, and accounting is, is so much easier when you, when you set things up appropriately. Um, your do to do froms can be done automatically when set up correctly. So a, a do to subsidiary or do from parent if you record the transaction at one level, it will automatically record the reverse at the other level. So obviously you're, you're, you're making one less journal entry and your end of month or whenever you're reconciling it, it's automatically reconciled because if you're doing that consistently, your due, due to has to equal your due from. And so those will automatically then eliminate when you go to, to consolidate those entities. So, um, you know, I think I could go on and on with the different things that that, that it can do, um, but those those are two that we use um, uh, on virtually every client situation and uh, really save a lot of time and, more importantly, improve um, what we're giving to our clients. So it seems like dimensions are really core, customized, potentially customizing the dimensions that will drive a lot of what you're doing with reporting and dashboards, and then... Uh, utilizing the do to and do from, which will cut out a, you know, a journal entry because it's taking care of it, exactly yeah. and reduce your reckon yes and reduce your reconciliation time yeah, yeah so those are key benefits of of that function. What do you think is the biggest mistake that you see people making across the board mm -hmm. with Intact, regardless of whether they're new, whether they've been using the ERP platform for a few years? Yeah. Um, I think the biggest mistake, maybe this isn't Intact specific, but it, it's so robust and there are so many things you can do with it that mistakes that we made early on, we went too fast. And it's a big element of, of change management and we went too fast on our roadmap. So it's very important to have a roadmap of all the things you want to do and want to improve. Um, you know, whether that's integrating with another software um, or changing a, a process workflow or um, developing robust dashboards and, and those sorts of things. Those are all great to have on your roadmap, but you can't get there overnight in our experience. Um, it's, you know, if you go too fast, maybe you can do it, but the client's not ready. And so just balancing those things on a continuous basis and, and kind of agree at the front on what you're going to do and perfect 
before you move on to the next phase. So break it up into phases or, um, you know, educate your clients that we're going to get to core accounting in the first, you know, 90 to 120 days, but it could take us, you know, a year to get everything else done um, in, in subsequent stages when, when you add it all together. So slow down, plan it out, and then, and then manage that. Similarly to that, if I could just take a minute and even expand on what I said about dimensions, um, I'm not sure if it, you, you can avoid some rework, which would be a mistake if, if you had to do a rework by thinking about all the new ways you might want to report on your information in the future. Um, so most companies that move on to Intact, that we move on to Sage Intact, are coming from something that isn't giving them this robust um, reporting framework. And so they're used to just, they're used to getting um, their basic financial statements and that's about it. But they're excited about the, all the other things that it could produce for us in, in Sage Intact. So um, we need to take them through a, a brainstorming session of, well, how might you want to see your information? What, at what level of detail do you want? It? And let's make sure that we're tagging the transactions on the way into the system with all the right dimensions so that when, when we want to report out of the system, those things are already there. And we might not do that, like I just said, for a year. We might not get to that, but we don't want to have to go back and say, wow, we can't get that because we didn't tag those transactions way back here. So thinking that through and, and when you think you're done, think a little bit further and think a little bit further because you, you can really, you may never use it, admittedly, but if you don't have it set up, you're going to have to rework things in order to get it set up. And that'll cost a lot of time. I imagine that's an especially big issue in uh, smaller companies where you're the outsourced solution and there's nobody internally that's thinking that far ahead. If right. you don't bring up these kinds of issues and I've, I've seen this with outsourced IT, you've seen it with outsourced marketing, outsourced sales strategy, management consultants and, and building that roadmap must have a tremendous amount of value managing their expectations, helping them prioritize. And yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and admittedly, you can't, you can't always think of everything, but this is where you're, this is where you're an advisor to those clients. They're counting on you to, they might not even know it. They might not know they want something until you show it to them. And then they're, then they can't all of a sudden live without it. Um, so thinking through, and that's where some experience comes into play of, you know, working within the same verticals will definitely help you be efficient at this and say, here's a dashboard that, that we have found valuable with other clients. And, and would you like that too? Um, but even when it's, when it's not, maybe it's a new vertical for you. Um, thinking through, you know, this is where you put your business hat on and take your accounting hat off, so to speak, and say, how, what information do you need to run your business better? Or what information do your managers need to help you make decisions more quickly because they have the right information at their fingertips. Um, so yes, it, it does. It, it's, it's harder with smaller clients that, that just don't have that background to think about what they, you know, they don't know what they don't know and it's our job to find it for them. You know, that makes total sense. And I imagine too, the more you concentrate on certain verticals, you see a certain amount of muscle memory with knowing what similar businesses have needed. Yes, absolutely. Verti industry verticals are a huge advantage in, in client accounting services and in setting, um, setting up systems for, for clients. Absolutely a huge, huge advantage. So the, the final area that I want to make sure we touch on today is you have a unique perspective in heading up a group in, in, a, in a large top 100 firm, top 25 firm. Where, where do you see the future headed? If you're putting on your hat of being almost like a product manager, thinking about what your outsourced clients need the most, where are the big investments being made? What's going to change the most in the next six to 24 months? Well, I, I think that we're going to continue to see um, demand for this service, you, you, you know, in the, in the remote work environment that, that most of the world is in recently. Um, uh, we're seeing more people call and ask questions about how do I even get a bill paid when, when my, you know, my labor force is, is, is not in the office and things like that. So simple things like that are certainly raising the awareness of this. So demand is going to continue to, I think, skyrocket for this service. 
And then subsequently, it means that automation um, is going to continue to um, take on new forms and, and new shapes and sizes for everyone, new, new means to get that done. So, you know, artificial intelligence, however you define that um, and however it's used to enter data for you and integrate systems together is going to take the, the keystrokes out of accounting. And, and that's all a good thing because it does give us the time to have the conversations that we were just having with our, we were just talking about having with our clients about, let's turn this into a business tool for you. It, it, accounting is not just meant to be a compliance you know, requirement. It's not just for bankers or auditors or tax preparers. Let's turn it into a business tool for you. But in order to do that, I think there's a huge advantage for CPAs. We have the right seat at the table. Um, so, so we can have a conversation with the clients about what information they need to truly run their business better. Um, help them think through what numbers can tell them and how we can combine them to show them in a different way and make them understandable um, to them and their employees. You know, we're, we're not just taking accounting to business owners or boards anymore. We're deploying it to operations managers on their iPad using a Sage Intact or some other tool, um, you know, to, to combine the operation information so that they can see the results of their effort and what they need to do more of or less of or change or tweak and they can help direct the employees so information is is always key and we're in a spot to get them better information that they bet than they've ever had and if we can educate them on how to use that they're going to make better decisions and they're going to have better results and so that's the passion that i have and and i think that's the opportunity that we have as an industry to move towards that and away from, um, you know, the, the core back office accounting functions. Um, and at the same time, I don't want to diminish those sorts of things because compliance is key. You know, if the numbers aren't right, they're no good either. So there's always a balance there, but it doesn't have to be an or, it can be an and. And, and so I, I, I like balancing those things. And I, and I really like having those conversations with people that aren't numbers people that didn't want to be an accountant when they were in seventh grade um, and now find themselves running a business. So it seems like tech, tech, technology is the big enabler of being able to uh, handle the compliance more efficiently to free up the time to really be a true trusted advisor. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We have to know the rules as accountants. We have to know what the right answer is, but that doesn't mean we have to enter them with our own fingers in order to, in order to be doing accounting and, and to be a business advisor is, is the next step beyond being, being that, that back office accountant. And, and it does enable us to do that. It gives us that time. That's, that's great. Terrific, terrific advice. Uh, Wade, where's the best way for somebody to learn more about you, learn more about Baker Tilly, social media, LinkedIn, anything like that, a particularly good place if somebody wants to reach out to you or follow you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we do have, of course, our, our website is is the, you know, the king of all our information. So BakerTilly.com there. Baker Tilly has a, a good social presence on LinkedIn. Um, it's growing on Twitter. It's, it's not, uh, it, it's maybe not where some uh, you know, it's not going to, it's not where it's going to be. It's going to keep getting better. Um, and then me personally, LinkedIn is, is the best way to get a hold of me. If you, if you want to find me or through our website at bakertilly.com. Excellent. Well, thank you, Wade, so much for taking time today to talk with me today as part of the AI accounting podcast. You've been listening to Wade Youssef from Baker Tilly Advantage and wish you all the best in growing your practice and heading into the future. Thank you, Joshua. I appreciate it. And it was fun to be with you. Likewise. Thanks, Wade. All right. Thanks for listening to this episode of the AI and Accounting Podcast. To subscribe and leave a review, check us out at blog.vic.ai or wherever you like to consume podcast episodes, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube.